Okay, this is just weird people news again, okay? Now, that being said, y'all, on these last two videos, I just want to make it perfectly clear that this is more along the lines of uh, benefiting me and uh, my opinions and see how I would do things and what, what I would change if it was my case, okay? However, since I'm doing this as my benefit, I'm sharing it with y'all of my opinions. No more, no less. It's not legal advice. Okay? Uh, so, just take it as my opinions and uh, and it just gives you a different outlook and uh, and that looks straightforward. Just, you know, you, you had the judges, uh, what he said, you had the prosecutor, what he said, you had the guy, what he said, and you have what I said. Okay? There's four different ways you can look at something instead of just looking at one direct way of looking at things. You're overall looking at everything. Okay? Uh, to be informed of the what would benefit you the most. Okay? So, because my way may not benefit you. His way may not benefit you, but the judge's way not definitely not going to benefit you. And that prosecutor is definitely not going to benefit you, okay? Uh, but there's four different ways of looking at these things. So, just never look straight forward. Always look around you. Be able to protect yourself by any means necessary. Um, even by legalese, person still means contract. That's by their uh, definition in their legal laws so even if you want to uh, go by legalese instead of lawful always still keep using man or woman okay um, because that definition of person does not help you whatsoever unless you are in a corporation itself within this court as trustees. Now, again, um, just in case I'm going to miss a couple of other ones, uh, this uh, YouTube channel is Rocky Mountain High, Colorado, the long version, uh, capital R-O-C-K-Y, capital M-N-T, and then uh, the little dash there, uh, capital h i G H capital C O. All right. And this is Breaking Ridge Municipal Court. Okay. And uh, regardless of what anybody says, you can always challenge jurisdiction in the courts. And I have other videos telling you case laws that tell you that he has to tell you how he gets jurisdiction. Everybody keeps saying, well, no, it's a sovereign citizen thing. And remember, remember, remember. Bullcrap. There is case law saying that these people actually literally have to tell you how they have jurisdiction over you, whether it's subject matter, uh, you know, all the, uh, the other two, or three. <laughs> all right. Let's go. The, the fraud that I do, whatever fraud Mr. Anderson is speaking of, is um, he's asking us to point to laws that I just established what the law is. This derives from the U.S. Constitution, the State of Colorado Constitution, and which is the charter of uh, the town of Breckenridge. If he wishes to disregard the authority that we're citing, you know, I, I'm not here to actually convince Mr. Anderson um, anything other than that uh, there are laws that, that have established the authority of this court and this body and the right of me to represent the people. Of and the people of Colorado. Um, Again, you speak of the town of That's fine. Well, initially on this first motion, the court will note that I've read everything, read the whole motion. I'm following my judicial code. We are looking at various that all the matters that you have cited are civil, and uh, this court has been established by U.S.
U.S. Constitution, the state constitution, the Colorado legislature. All right. Remember what he just said, by the U.S. Constitution, not the United States Constitution. There is a big difference, people. It's all in the words and trickery of the minds. They're using trickery of words. Okay? Um, so, yes, he may have jurisdiction in the U.S. Constitution, but he does not have jurisdiction in the United States jurisdiction. It is key, people. Uh, we did nitpick at us, so we got to nitpick them. And then further, the town of Breckenridge Town Council, we are dealing with statutory law, not civil law. Um, as far as the court having jurisdiction over you, service was made over you by the issuance of a, sub, of a substance and complaint. And the due process that you are talking about is what is provided at a trial. I've not been served anything for this matter or this case, so I don't, I don't understand what the court is talking about. You were issued a summons and complaint. That summons and complaint was issued on the 23rd of June. I've not received anything. Um, you were served it. The officer swore that you received it. I would like to say that that is fraudulent. I have not been served anything from this court in any part of this matter. You were served by a police officer, not by the court. Again, I would like to go on record and say that there has not been any service made for any part of this matter by any police officer, sheriff, which is required to be a sheriff if I'm uh, to understand the law correctly under you guys' state laws. It's supposed to be a sheriff. I understand all of the law correctly. It would probably be in the best interest to hire an attorney, but I would doubt you would be doing that. Um, I can see how this gets a little confusing, right? But the officer cannot make that determination. Now, they let him do it, but he is the executive branch. He is not a judicial branch. He cannot make a summons, y'all. Uh, what the officer could do is write something, give it to a prosecutor, then the prosecutor, by due process, can issue an opinion about uh, having jurisdiction, give it to the judge. The judge will get a warrant and say, hey, you are, or even so much as a summons, <coughs> which technically that's not even correct by Constitution standards. It has to be a warrant. Um, and be served by the sheriff or a process server. But it's got to be a process server or a sheriff. Okay? It cannot be an officer. It's not a judicial branch. He cannot even tell you you even have a court date. But this is how backwards we have become. By not knowing our rights, by the way. It should be noted that uh, at a trial, when you're asking for specifics, that is what a trial does. And the people have the burden of proof, is, which is beyond a reasonable doubt. It should be noted that you did cite Boyd v. U.S. Uh, that was a case settled 140 years ago. Rule B. Gold that you cited is over 100 years old. Watson v. Memphis, which is again a civil case, uh, is not applicable. 
West Virginia State Board of Education versus Barnett is an 80 year old case and once again is civil in its nature. Um, in going through this, uh, the court finds that most of your sites are at least 100 years old. They have probably been uh, modified or adjudicated. Do you wish to address the fact that this? Stop right there again, right? He said probably been modified or adjudicated. He don't even know for a fact, and he is sitting there representing him as a judge and making legal determinations on something that he is presuming or assuming that has been done, but not going by facts, y'all. So he is making a judgment call on something that he doesn't know one way or the other about these cases that he, the, you guys called defendant, brought up. And, you know, the judge right here are playing out saying, um, well, he doesn't know for sure, right? And he's basically doing a presuming and assumptions that there is other cases overriding these cases that he brought up. Well, that's fine and dandy. Put it on record. So he can rebut it. The fact that whether or not they're civil or criminal has and should have no relevance as the Constitution of the United States specifically states that, and I'll go to with uh, what the prosecuting attorney brought up under the 10th Constitutional Amendment, that that right uh, belongs to the people, me being one of those people, uh, I hereby take away any authority that this court may think that it has over me along with the, and I quote, again, the prosecuting attorney stating the town of Breckenridge being the person that was injured in this party. Again, they cannot be an injured party. I did not injure the entire town. The entire town of Breckenridge is not here right now to stand in defense. Neither is the entire people of the state of Colorado. In fact, I being the only sovereign individual from the state of Colorado, I'm sorry, from Colorado State, here present in this courtroom, I'm the only authority in this courtroom in which to move on any matter that is... Now, listen to the word carefully what he used. He said Colorado State. He did not say the state of Colorado. Now, I don't know about Colorado, but Texas did have actually a Supreme Court case on this, that there is different jurisdiction between the state or uh, Texas state and the state of Texas. There's two different jurisdictions and the, there is a uh, Texas Supreme Court uh, calling that out as such. So there is a difference, people. Brought before this court. Therefore, I request again that this court dismisses this case and this matter as I am not a corporation or a legal fiction in which they are attempting to put me down as. I am a spiritual being. I am born alive in Colorado State, which I have established in this court. I would like to see where the individual known as Town of Breckenridge and the, or the individual known as the people of the state of Colorado, where were they born and where are they? Who brings this matter before the court except for to this, Mr. Gregory? Now, pause right there, right? Uh, and this is what I talked about previous, right? <clears throat> Who's the man or woman? Who's this Mr. State of, uh, for me, Mr. State of Texas? Or uh, Mrs. Abilene that's bringing these charges against me, okay? Because uh, I'm here willing to settle the matter if I cause any harm, damage, or loss uh, to uh, Mrs. Abilene or to Mr. Texas. Okay, I want to stay in honor. If I cause any harm, damage, or loss to these people, then uh, be an honorable man, I need to create remedy. Right? Um, 
So how can a thing be injured? People, sit and think about that. All right. Now, we keep on going back to the 14th Amendment. And uh, just here recently, the Supreme Court denied to hear about the 14th Amendment, whether it was legally ratified or not. Why did they deny it? Because if they heard it, and now the, the one that died in El Pas uh, Alpine, Texas, and I can't think of his name now, uh, whatever that judge's name is. Ah. Anyway, he said that the courts probably would never hear it because it would throw the courts in chaos because he believed that it was never legally ratified. And we're not using the Tenth Amendment to our advantage near enough, and we just kept going back to the Fourteenth Amendment. Which, you know, uh, the Fourteenth Amendment does help persons, but it does not help men and women that actually have rights. It helps persons that have privileges, which is code, statutes, rules, and regulations. And the ordinance, which that may or may not brought up already, ordinance, again, is a member of the corporation. I believe the fist can bring that up. Okay? So always keep that in mind. The judge denied American jurisprudence. But jurisprudence says ordinance is a member of a corporation. So, in fact, what they are trying to do is have him in there as a business, as a person. All right. You know, I don't really know what any of that means. Um, that, uh, to the extent that um, that's very interesting, that's a great question. Um, we <laughs> Everything that the man just said, the attorney says, well, I don't really what any all any of these things really mean. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's calling you out on your crap. And, and some attorneys... You know, they're taught in this perfectly straight line, all right? So he may not actually know what this means unless he's, you know, getting paid thousands of dollars an hour, right? He's an overpriced attorney. Then he probably know what it means, but, uh, you know, he he's a little guy. The state constitution brought up that they, it's okay for to bring up municipal courts, which it does. Most states did. But remember, municipal courts is for businesses only. What they are doing is treating you as a business, a corporation. All right. Enhances the reason why we are brainwashed about being a person. You know, we've, we've gotten so brainwashed. Oh, he's my person instead of he's my man or my woman or anything like that. Right. Now it's he's my person. He's such a good person. We don't even say he's a good man or she's a good woman. She's a good woman or, you know, she's a good person. He's a good person. We've been so deluded down with this word person. Why, y'all? Why is that? Just saying. Again, this is benefit me and I'm sorry this video is taking away so long. Oh, my goodness. I didn't want to be this long. Diesel with the People News. Bye, y'all.